Today I'm reacting to Better Call Saul Season 3 Episode 5 Chicanery and Episode 6 Off Brand. Where we left off, looks like Mike has a new job and his last job. Jimmy is not doing so well, so I'm really excited to see where it goes. So let's just get into it. But before we do, please subscribe. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed so far. I really appreciate it. And thank you to my patrons. Your support really means a lot. Any small YouTuber is greatly supported by any patron, so I really appreciate that too. Okay, let's get into it. For a second, I was brought back in time and I was like, oh, Jesse's house. But no, that's Chuck's house. So, you got a phone, the yard's half mode. Uh this is obviously a flashback because of the blue tinge to everything. What do you think? On? Off. I think off. So he must have come here right after the breakup of sorts? Divorce? Oh, I don't know that it is a breakup yet. I was there for a second. It almost kind of seemed like he needed to lie to his ex in some way. Maybe the electromagnetic sensitivity, but no. Why are you sitting here in the dark? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. Boom. Power goes down. Okay, so this is Chuck's lie. How about we just rough it? Why not? It'll be fun. There's an uneasiness in the air and I don't fully get it. How's the tour going? It's good. Well, it's a lot of hotels. Yeah. So maybe their breakup was more because she's just always gone and his breakdown was like later, after Jimmy became a lawyer but and after their breakup. I miss having one, one place to hang my hat. She misses you, Chuck. Oh. I'm sorry. No, I'm just at dinner. What's up? And this is early days, so he is really struggling. Yeah, hold on one second. Come on, Jimmy, you're supposed to tackle her. <laughs> Rebecca! Rebecca, you don't know what you're doing. What the hell? What is your problem? It is incredibly bad manners to answer a cell oh, phone in no, company. Chuck. I may have overreacted. That was very abrupt. No, I understand. You don't understand. And Chuck, why didn't you tell the truth? I know. Pride. Thank you for a lovely dinner, but I should be getting back to the hotel. Is this the moment? Is this the last Chuck Rebecca moment? Would you rather she think you're a raging prick than know the truth? No. Yeah, well, kind of seems like it. Woof. Something I was thinking, maybe Jimmy becoming a lawyer and the electromagnetic sensitivity thing happened at the same time. Because I've always thought it was connected, at least Jimmy to that sensitivity. Jesus, what are you doing, man? There's barely any oxygen in that. <laughs> Good. This guy cares so much for the animals. I'm looking for someone with a light touch. A real pro. To do what, Jimmy? I got just a guy then. Brings out Mike. Mike's his guy now. Great job, Miss Wexler. Very refreshing. Yay, Kim doing a good job is always a good thing. We couldn't have done it without you, and I hope you realize this means a whole lot of work coming your way. Oh, that's... that's great. Yes, uh, the work's fine. What, what about the money? There is something you need to hear before we get any deeper in. Charles has been making some very ugly allegations about his brother, Jimmy. He believes Jimmy transposed the address numbers. That's pretty baroque. <laughs> Should you also mention that he is capable of it? If there's one thing I cannot abide is a man who won't own up to his mistakes. Now, whatever mud Miguel is slinging is not going to screw me out of the best outside counsel yeah. I've ever had. Yes, sir. <laughs> and now the most important thing, dinner. That is the most important thing. You're sure it's not going to be a problem? I am. I'm not. Mesa Verde isn't involved in any way, shape, or form. It's about the Mesa Verde documents, so you are involved. <laughs> and while she's guaranteeing that, Jimmy is trying to finagle some outside help to this problem that could just blow up in everyone's face. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about the exit signs. It's code. I appreciate all you're doing. Thank you. 
Mr. Alley, I wonder if you'd give us a moment. I'd like to go over something with my colleague. No problem. I'll be outside when you're ready. <laughs> Howard, as usual, is very robotic, but he was thinking something there. Too. Thinking maybe Chuck needs to, to be done. Don't maybe he needs to retire. Maybe there's no need to put you through the ringer like this. What Jimmy did is unconscionable, yes. No, I support him. He deserves disbarment, not some slap on the wrist. No, Howard, there's only one way forward. <laughs> Howard, you're gonna have to uh, maybe overrule Chuck for once because Chuck's okay. not thinking about Robert HHM Allen or the good of the company. Any reasonable person would agree that assaulting another lawyer in his own home reflects badly on Mr. McGill's fitness as an attorney. Sure, I guess. The State Bar believes that once we have presented the facts, the committee will agree that disbarment is warranted for James McGill. Thank you very much. Boo! Boo! Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, let's bring that great lawyer energy today. But there is another side to this story about two brothers whose relationship after years of strain finally broke. Going with the emotional... Plea. And James McGill is an asset to our legal community, and he should remain a full member of it in good standing. I mean, he is a lawyer in Breaking Bad, so... I mean, but there's a lot of seasons. Many things could happen. For any lawyers, if you are disbarred, could you ever become a lawyer again? Let me know in the comments. He and I were concerned that Jimmy might strike his brother. <laughs> Which I don't think Jimmy has ever shown any evidence that he would do. How did you come to know him? His brother asked to hire him in the mailroom. Now this conversation is so adversarial, when they used to work together. The partners decided it would be best to avoid the appearance of nepotism. Nepotism? Your firm is Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill, right? Who's the other Hamlin? <laughs> Two Hamlins. My father. <laughs> Objection. We'll uh, give you some leeway, Miss Wexler, but... Don't stray too far. Eventually, he was hired by the firm of Davis and Maine. I'd be happy to say more about that, if you'd like. We no. don't need to talk about that. Thank you. I have nothing further. <laughs> that stare down by Howard. Come on, man. You know, she's a professional. You're a professional. She had to ask those questions. What are you still doing here? The light's delayed. How delayed? I don't know what's happening there, but I'm excited to find out. What are we doing? Stalling. <laughs> Stalling for what, though? I gotta know. Yes, my brother has many admirable qualities. In some ways, I can say I admire him. Too cold. I love my brother. But Ted Kaczynski's brother loved him, too. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we don't need to bring Ted into this. Ted! I love my brother. You can't talk about your love for your brother without rehearsing it. Be right there, Howard. I don't know if it's Howard, but I don't know what it is. Is it a guy that's gonna kidnap him? Adult nap? Kim deserves Mesa Verde, not you, not HHM. She earned it. Ah, uh, her presence here is not gonna help his case. Like a normal person, but oh no! Wishful thinking! Everyone listening to this, horrified. Can we take all the shit down off the walls? At least they're not cutting off the part where he did this to help his brother. Uh, um. <laughs> like, woo, that's a doozy. You found it? I left it in the car. Did he leave it in the car? They got those cones out there like this is a very special day for them. Most important thing happening in the Excuse building. Me. Is that Huel? <laughs> Huel just always be running into people and grabbing stuff out of their jackets. <laughs> love you, Huel. I love that Huel was connected to the vet, but he's going to be connected to Saul in the future. Did an excellent job of covering his tracks. Objection. I'm going to continue. It will extend you the same latitude on cross, Miss Wexler. Nice. Okay, that's fine. I was about to say, <laughs> even if it's not relevant, if the judge is like, I'd like to hear this, then it, then it goes. But you do sound somewhat unhinged on the recording. What you heard was theater, a performance, play acting. I exaggerated the symptoms of my disease. Interesting by his own lawyer to kind of cross-examine him before Kim can. Do you hate your brother? 
Absolutely not. There you go. It's time for I your scene. The great actor, There's nothing Chuck. Malicious. But what I know for sure is that the law is too important to be toyed with. <laughs> this does sound rehearsed. That's why I did what I did. Not to hurt him, but to protect something that I hold sacred. The the law, not brotherhood. He doesn't care about brotherhood. Is it Rebecca? Is Rebecca coming? Why, though? Why do they want Rebecca? <laughs> and he, his look on his face is like, oh, no. <laughs> Chuck, I wish you told me. I, I can't believe what you've been going through. <laughs> what What's going on? Because all this is so stressful for me. Is that what Jimmy told you? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to upset you, to worry you unnecessarily. Mm, no. But I guess that I'm more of a distraction. <laughs> Jimmy, let's get Rebecca. Distraction! Please, stay. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. So it doesn't seem like they they did break up, but it was more of a distance thing. And she didn't know about it, so she's not a bad person for what I kind of thought was she found out about the electromagnetism and she left. You know, she's going to hate you when this is over. Yep. <laughs> I'm almost worried that her asking that is a metaphor for Kim hating him when this is all over, like the show. Because like I've said before, She's not in Breaking Bad, so something is up with that. Would you like to set the scene for the disciplinary committee? Tell them, you know, what your house looked like at the time of the recording. It was like being inside of a disco. I think for this particular hearing, Jimmy better dial down the, the charismaticism. How did you know your provocation would work? Isn't it because you knew that it was <laughs> precisely the thing that would worry me so much that I'd say anything to talk you down? Objection. Okay, withdrawn. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite thing in court shows, when they say the crazy thing and they're just withdrawn. Crazy about that, huh? And I say it was evidence of only one thing. My brother hates me. Uh, <laughs> well, we did promise the defense some leeway. <laughs> they were waiting for the, the judges to say, we're going to give you some leeway to throw in Jimmy, because Jimmy needs a little leeway in that courtroom. But he'll get stuff done with that leeway. Uh, talk about when these symptoms first started. It was shortly after you were divorced. Is that right? So it was divorce. Okay. Yes. Now Jimmy has outed me in front of you. You know why? To rattle me. He's hoping this will break me down. Split me apart at the seams like a murderer confessing on an episode of Perry Mason. <laughs> it kind of seems like we're getting there. Keep talking, Chuck. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Jimmy. Well, you're disappointing me too, Chuck. Do you have anything <laughs> else? <laughs> I think it's pretty clear to everyone in that room, things are not well between the brothers. Okay, if you'd had, um, I don't know, lung cancer? <laughs> Easter egg. Does it hurt right now? Electricity is everywhere in the modern world. Phone. <laughs> I can handle this fine. Oh, Huel snuck a phone into his jacket. She's going to call him. Can you feel more current coming from any particular direction right now? <laughs> Jimmy is such a shock and awe lawyer. Jimmy, do you have something in your pocket? My cell phone. Just as I thought. There's no battery in here. Sorry, little trick, isn't it? Yeah, you got me, Chuck. Mm, Dead to rights. I don't know. You've taken all the leeway you're getting, Mr. McGill. Wrap it up fast. <laughs> okay, God, that's all the leeway he's getting. He did good with it. You know Could you reach into your breast pocket and tell me what's there? <laughs> He'll testify he planted this fully charged battery on you over an hour and a half ago. Did Kim know about this plan? I, I am not crazy! Oh, here's the breakdown. I, I just, I just couldn't prove it! <laughs> Slow zoom in. You think this is bad? This, this chicanery? Chicanery, said the word. He defecated through a sunroof ever since he was nine. Always the same. All the stories we've heard from and Chuck he to coming lawyer. together. What a sick joke. And you, you have to stop him. You... Oh, no. <laughs> Guy in the back is like, I, I'm a head out. I apologize. I lost my train of thought. And zooming back out. That's a cool little trick. <laughs> Turns out these brothers know each other better than we all thought. They know exactly what triggers each other. It's how we know they are brothers. All 
Alrighty then. <sighs> that was a fun one. Took place in court pretty much the whole episode, but it was really fun. What do y'all think? Do you think Chuck loves Jimmy? Let me know in the comments. I think he does. I think he falls into a trap a lot of people have, that it's more of a conditional love. But yeah, I need to think more about it, and I'd love to hear your comments to help me think through what I'm thinking as well. We didn't see Mike at all, so I'm hoping that he shows up in the next episode because I'm really excited about him and Gus and all that situation. So yeah, let's just get into it. <laughs> Okay, Hector, which means we're on the Mike storyline, so the Better Call Saul gods listen to my pleas. You're good? No, you're supposed to stare at him for a good minute or two. That was tense. Oh, here's, here's our favorite guy. Every time I see him, I just feel for him, because at the very beginning of Breaking Bad, we got to know him. He's a nice kid. Have a seat. How's your dad? Do you not have the money? Cool, all right. Hey, my father's gonna bring in his Corolla. His dog's tore up the back seat. Like, not trying to make friends here. One of my guys? Let me finish. I'm nervous for him. You got my share, man. I swear. You're lucky Tuco's not here. Make it up next week. Thank you, Nacho. Connector. Wait. No way he lets him. Oh, he's letting him go. Maybe Nacho's gonna pay for that. Because Hector is not about for Who works for who? Huh? No, oh, he's got plot armor though. Okay. I wonder if things would have been better if it had been Tuco or Nacho. Maybe about the same. Let's be some curo negro. Mm, Nacho, you want out of this life? I really like learning about Nacho's character, though. He's not one-dimensional. Ow. Okay, he didn't have the same reaction as me. He has a better tolerance for pain. Because Jimmy McGill cares about people. He's devoted the past three years of his life to his brother's welfare. My prediction is he's gonna get suspended for a while, because he is a lawyer in, better in uh, Breaking Bad. Jimmy snapped. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Half of the judges are like, no. Chuck? Jimmy McGill had no premeditated agenda when he entered his brother's home. Is he Chuck lost his temper. Right there on the ground. So now the question you must ask yourselves is this. Is Chuck, for your own better, health, you need to let her in, man. Oh, here's the 12 short months. 12 short months. According to your summation, I had to be a saint. Saint Jimmy. Jimmy's good. Yeah. Saint Jimmy. I want a shirt with that on it. Jimmy with a halo and it just says Saint Jimmy. Someone's probably already made it. Where are your notes? Let's uh, spread them out and roll around on them, see what happens. <laughs> That's kinky. I think it's Rebecca. She's probably mad, but also really just wants to get into Chuck's house. Um, I, I was uh, just at Chuck's and he won't answer the door. I want you to come with me to get him to let us in. <laughs> you, you know how to break in and I need your help no, to break in. You owe it to him. I don't owe him squat. You got what you wanted. Now it's time to do what's right. Yeah. No. Wow. Jimmy, he's still your brother. I don't know, like, I think she's not right. Not he's not. Ooh, gosh. Too much is being said, I can't comment on all of it. Enjoy your champagne. I think she's partially right that going with her to help would be a good thing, but it wouldn't work. Chuck wouldn't let him in. He hates him. But that was crazy about Jimmy's response. That is a new reaction to Chuck. Now she wants daddy pancakes every weekend. Is this a support group? Oh, Mike's there with her. This has got to be hard for him. I'm all for it. Enough that you'd come again? We'll see. <laughs> Mike doesn't want to be there exploring his feelings about all this. To help with a new playground. Why me? Well, they need someone who knows how to pour concrete. Sweetheart, that's not really my department. I know how to put bodies in that concrete. Just tell me when, where. <laughs> come on. It's sweet, though, the support they show each other after such a horrible tragedy in the family. 
How many phones do you have, Howard? Chuck? You gonna let Howard in, Chuck? Chuck, it's Howard. <laughs> I, I think he knows, Howard. I'm not leaving, Chuck. Chuck? Okay, he's letting somebody in. That's good. As much as I don't like him, I still want him to get better, have people who care about him. Jimmy was suspended for 12 months. Jimmy's not going to be a lawyer for one year. And if he screws up, which we both know is likely, his PPD terminates. And that one year may turn into forever. That's true. He's got to stay clean for a year and... <laughs> Ooh, Jimmy struggles with that. I say... Put your energy into the future. Stay thirsty, my friends. To new beginnings. Nice. Okay, that's good. Happy for you, Chuck. I hope that's true. Let Jimmy be. He'll do what he does. Maybe he was thinking about the battery in his pocket and why he didn't feel it and he's maybe hoping to mentally overcome this. Which I don't know if he can because it may be a mental health issue, but for him it is real. It doesn't matter if it's in your head. Is this all real or is it just happening inside my head? Of course it's happening inside your head, Harry. Why should that mean that it's not real? All right, see you soon on TV, right? Don't you need to pull those commercials for a while? Francesca! <laughs> if you don't want to have another day of calls, you better cancel that commercial. Get me somebody who can pull a commercial stat. Oh, he said the word stat, so it's going to get done quickly. I looked into it, and breaking the lease will cost a hell of a lot less than 10 months' rent. As far as I'm concerned, nothing's changed, all right? I'm going to keep practicing law. The day I don't show up with my half, that's the day we'll talk about closing this place. That's fair. I'm worried he's going to go into nefarious deeds to pay his part. You'll see. <laughs> okay, now i got to go make... A thousand more calls trying to find a job. I've heard in and out pays very well. Give me Jimmy. That's right, that's me. What I did for me, my friends, I will do that for you. Oh, he's gonna go into marketing. I think there's similar fields. You have to convince people of something. It's a field of persuasion. Well, think about it. Excellent. When uh, do you think you might decide? <laughs> How short? We would need to be shooting in the next 15 minutes. It's going to be a no. Maybe you could make a commercial. Have you not been listening? That's what I've been trying. Okay. Is it a, a commercial for a consulting commercial business? Jimmy McGill's the name. Advertising Get is... Ready. Yeah, advertising commercial. We're totally off brand here. I'm Jimmy McGill, a lawyer you can trust, and I can't suddenly turn into... Commercial guy. I'll have to call off this thing. Okay, I'm intrigued. Whatever that means. Yes, back to Gus. Los pollos hermanos. Back to the chicken farm. Okay, we need to see more of Gus and Mike working together. That's what I want. Is this where they, keep? they got a good operation going on. Is that cayenne pepper? If that was covered in cayenne pepper, you gotta watch where you put your hands. Eyes, eyes, not anywhere else. Take your pick. So they're just letting him do it. If you got out of count, you get five. Don Hector gets six. Okay, let me know in the comments. Is Gus afraid of Don Hector? Is his operation so much bigger that they would need to be afraid of him? Give it to him. Sure. Give it to him. <laughs> the look on Nacho's face and with what we've seen from him, it just seems like he's done with all this. What's he looking for? I mean, this place is sort of reminiscent of the laundry, so would he be looking for that, like a place for that lab? <laughs> Lydia! What are you doing here? And why do you look so confident? It could work. She must have been so much more confident back then. The whole time I was watching Breaking Bad, I knew I recognized her, but I didn't know what from. And then I went through her IMDb, and it's from A Knight's Tale, which is one of my favorite movies. 
All right, Obi-Wan Kenobi, let's go. Chuck's gonna go to one of his neighbors and be like, hello there. Okay, is the Beatles now? He's definitely uh, sucking up his pride to do this. But it also makes me think he has not given up on trying to bring down Jimmy. As, may, I, may I speak with Dr. Lara Cruz? Please? The way they're doing the lighting on this is fun. Your father, he showed up. Where does he get his upholstery? From uh, the distributor. Oh, where is the distributor? Oh, he's gonna want to bring his dad into this, but Nacho probably wants to keep him out of it. My father is a simple man. He is not in the business. You will teach him. Leonel talked to a guy in Los Lunas. Looks like Tuco knifed the guy. He'd be in there forever! <laughs> Nacho's like, I am in business with the craziest people. I need out. <laughs> Looks like his health is deteriorating pretty quickly. So it might be how he gets from here to where we see him in Breaking Bad. You talk to your father. What's he gonna do? He definitely doesn't want to do that. But maybe he's gonna poison him? Okay, and uh, don't wear stripes because you'll more a. It's a What's filmmaking moray? term. Just, just don't wear stripes. Okay, that's a more. That was good, right? What commercial did you run? Not, not Gimme Jimmy. I made a new one. When? <laughs> Today. Today. <laughs> Charlie Hustle, baby. Okay, let's see it. Gosh, Jimmy could be whatever he wanted to be. Okay, but keep in mind. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, it's not your best work. I'm excited to see. If he's worried about it, something's got to be up with it. You can't afford not to be on TV. Look <laughs> at you. You're and it gets better. I can. <laughs> the transitions. Call me, Saul Goodman. The world needs to know about you and your business. Call me now. now. Saul Goodman. He's using it. The first use of Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman. Yeah, it's Saul like Goodman. Saul Good, man. <laughs> that guy has a lot of energy. It's just a name. It's not just a name. It's your future. <laughs> it's really something. All right, that episode was a lot of fun. We got to see a little bit of Mike, more of Gus, and we got to see the beginnings of Saul Goodman. Part of me thought it would be like the last words of the show. Like someone will be like, what's your name, man? And then I'll do a close up on Jimmy and he'll say, Saul. Saul Goodman. But no, this is probably better and less cheesy. So it was really fun. I really enjoyed this one. Can't wait to get into the next one. So please like the video, subscribe, comment, and I guess all that there's left to say is, bye.